And still in Edo State, just days ahead of Saturday's governorship election in the state, the Conference of Nigerian Political Parties and the Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement Africa has condemned the federal government's empowerment program in the state, describing it as uh, advanced uh, vote-buying by the All-Progressive Congress. They also flayed the President Muhammad Wari for allegedly approving the empowerment program for 2,000 women and youth in Edo State four days before the election. A television commercial advertising the program, which supposedly held on Tuesday, September 15th, had allegedly gone viral, and some stakeholders in the state believe the program was to induce voters. State Chairman of the CNPP, Roy Oribabo, who spoke in the television um, or telephone interview, I beg your pardon, said an empowerment program a few days to the governorship election was nothing but vote buying. He called on President Buhari to discourage such actions, adding that uh, advanced vote buying should not prevail in a democracy. Similarly, the Director of Programs, Youth Initiative for Ad Advocacy Growth and Advancement Africa, uh, Cynthia Mbamalu, warned Edo voters to beware of politicians who might be going around to give them money, foodstuff, and other items to induce them ahead of the Saturday governorship election. I'm now being joined by Najib Bello, a political analyst and Obasomi Jude, President, Jose Maria S. Kriva Foundation, Ekboma. Thank you both for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much. I'm going to start with... Uh, Thank you and good morning. Good morning to you. I'm going to start with Mr. Bello. Um, what is your take on this fresh allegations of vote buying ahead of the elections? Well, they were allegations initially, but now these are confirmed um, bribery of voters happening in Edo State. I've seen um, the wife of uh, Pastor Osage Yamu posting pictures of herself distributing some of these funds and some of these monies to women and youth in Edo State. So it's, I, I don't think we, should, we can continue to call it allegations when it's happening right now. So these are confirmed events. The federal government has released our money to be used to bribe voters. So my op it's not just an opinion. It's not just an allegation anymore. Vote buying is happening right now in a two state, and we must fight this. All right, Najib, I, I want to quickly go on. If, if this is confirmed to be true, isn't there something skewed, you know, about carrying out a program for 2,000 women um, and youth, uh, you know, a few days before the election. And yeah, for people who would argue that the federal government's programs shouldn't stop simply because of an election, what would you respond to that? Uh, well, it is. It's, it's a way to skew um, voter support towards the election happening. And it's, it's very wrong. When people are saying these programs should not stop just because elections are happening, when did the programs begin? We had um, May, we had um, April, we had, we had a lot of time. Why is the program not happening in Lagos? Why is it not happening in Casina, where people are saying, or Kano, where people are saying their crops have been destroyed, their businesses are not performing well? Why is it not happening in those areas? Why is it happening in Edo State? And the next thing we'll hear, of course, on those state will follow. So the timing is becoming clear. This is like the grandest level of corruption I've seen in Nigeria. Politicians are no longer using their own personal money or money they've misappropriated from the government. They are actually going into the federal post and signing out money to be used to bribe voters just days before the elections. So it's, it's, it's the worst case of corruption I've seen in this country. And is there any other way to look at this? Um, of course, seeing the wife of one of the candidates um, you know, being one of there, the... There is no other way to look at it. It is corruption. It is bribery. It is direct vote buying. They are asking people to present their voter card in order to get these benefits. So there is no other way to put it. It is criminal. There's also, you know, those people who believe that um, uh, Nigerians can receive some of these um, funds, you know, and still vote the other way. 
if possible. So do you think with all the enlightenment campaigns that have been carried out prior, you know, the elections and in the past, do you believe that those who allegedly receive, um, you know, these funds might these you know, still can, vote their, can their... do otherwise? You see, there was a time when Nigerians were not as poor as they become under this government. There was a time when if you gave a Nigerian 2,000, the average Nigerian 2,000 naira or 1,000 naira or 500 naira, they would look the other way. But now you are talking about a country that has become the most impoverished in the entire world. We have the largest number of poor people, which I wouldn't say, I can't say right now whether they did it on purpose or not, but they are using it to benefit themselves. Now, a politician can vote out 500 naira per person, 1,000 naira per person from his personal pocket. But when you want to give 10,000 naira, 15,000 naira to each voter, that is where you have to open the federal purse. And to be clear with you, the people they are giving this money to are very poor people. These are people who are living on, that, on less than that dollar per day we hear of. So when you give them 10,000 naira in one day, and you tell them to vote three days or four days later, whether you like it or not, they must appreciate that 10,000 Naira, and it will affect their judgment. So we've been saying, oh, take the money, look the other way. But the money is getting so much and it's creating so much effects in the lives of these very, very poor people that we have to be very, very concerned. And we have to call bodies around the world we are hearing the US, UK banning some people for violence. Violence is not the only thing that is terrible in the elections in Nigeria these days. This vote buying has gone to the next level and we have to do something about it. Do you think that we've done enough, you know, with regards to the campaign against vote buying um, over time? Because there have been numerous messages that have been passed across the country um, on different media platforms with regards to educating people against uh, collecting money, um, you know, for their votes. So do you think that campaign has failed? Or are there forces that are just stronger than that campaign? Exactly. The thing is, are we spending up to 10,000 naira per person to create enlightenment and to fight against vote buying? No, we are not. How much has Nigeria dedicated, has the federal government dedicated to fight against the vote buying that they are actually the ones enforcing? Look at the, their so-called trader money, market money, and all of that. Do you know how many billions they spend on these projects? Compare it to whatever they come on TV. They tell one policeman on TV to come and say, oh, don't buy your votes, don't sell your votes. Compare that and you see there's a stark difference in the effort they are putting into vote buying compared, they, they can't be fighting themselves. We are not talk, we are no longer talking about one politician, one political godfather somewhere sponsoring this. We are talking about the federal government. The president's name was mentioned in the advertorial for this MIS um, microenterprise enhancement scheme. The president was mentioned, the federal government. Federal officers were mentioned to distribute these funds. So it doesn't compare at all. The we are not even putting any fight into it because the government cannot be fighting itself. We'll say uh, good morning and welcome to uh, Obasame Judna. Thank you so, uh, very much for joining us. Thank you very much and good morning. Yeah, I, we're trying to get your thoughts quickly on the issue or the allegations of vote buying um, in Edo State. Can you quickly share your, your views with us. All right, thank you very much. Uh, it's quite sad that uh, the process has gone so bad. And for those of us in Edo State, it is, if actually it happened, whatever the intention is uh, condemnable. But what I believe we should begin to consider is that uh, why, why are we as Nigerians so gullible in the sense that uh, with the dangling of little carrots or peanuts, people begin to do otherwise. But we must understand something. The peculiarity of the way the election has been held in Nigeria. It's on record that uh, in 2015, 2019, years thereabout, similar things like this happened in Edo State. Even in Nigeria, when the, 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 the current vice president was going up and down across the various uh, states, sharing money, you know, under various disguise. 
And when we engaged him in Benin, then he said that, uh, sorry, it is part of the work plan of the ministry. But I want to, you know, condemn, condemn it, though we are still investigating it properly before we now make a judgment on it. But Edo people should know that if they now decide to sell their votes because of RAPA or because of one or two thousand naira, it's left to them for the next four years. But I believe that what is going on now is not only peculiar to one party. Now we have seen that of one party. And before the election comes up, other parties too want to do the same thing. Yesterday, we were, in, we were going now talking about peace, vote, not fight. And somebody said that, I beg, now what I won't collect, now be my own. So you can see that the average Edo man is prepared to collect money to cast his own vote. But the question is, some of them might decide to collect this money from them and, and go ahead not to even vote for them. So it's not a sufficient condition for us to just conclude that uh, once you collect the money or the wrapper, it means automatically that you go and vote for them. So people still believe that this is the only time for them to collect money from the politician and they still go ahead to vote whoever they want to vote for. And again, note it, right. there are a lot of systematic buying of votes now going on. It's not just a matter of sharing of money or sharing of wrapper. Even in terms of appointments, like the current government now is also involved in giving out appointments less than two or three months to the election. And some of us now could, what is the basis for all these recent appointments? So you can see that when, you know, there are various uh, uh, formats in which these politicians have gone ahead to induce the average Edo man, the average Nigerian, to sell it to our conscience. But our, our appeal will be people should not allow this to continue. And for the federal government doing it at this moment, to, for, for me personally, I'm not surprised at all because there's nothing new in this regime that will take some of us by surprise. Look at what is happening to the first, you know, you know increase. Right. It's a record that this current regime at the federal level has been involved in systematic buying of votes. So this, what is happening at the state, to me personally, is not new. It's part of their design to ensure that people go ahead to do otherwise. But I believe that Edo people will definitely decide who they want to vote for. Whether you give them rapper right. or you oh, give them on, money, uh, they will decide what on, they, let's who, go back they are to, going to vote for. So that's not a sufficient condition for anybody to begin to, to ask questions. But I believe that it is hard time people are prosecuted. It's on record that... All right, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you. Like I'm going to interrupt you there, sir. I, I, I want to bring, uh, bring back uh, Najib Bello with you know, a thought that you just shared. Um, Najib Bello, quickly share your thoughts on if there are possible laws against... Um, these actions, um, is there a way that the law can step in at a time like this, or maybe even INEC? Yes, if you look at, uh, I can't uh, quote the exact portion, but we have some okay, flyers. I, I was, I was directing that to Najib Bello. Mr. Abbasami, Mr. Abbasami, kindly hold on. I, I, I would like uh, Najib Bello to respond to that. We'll, we'll come back to you. Okay. First and foremost, our laws cover things like bribery. Even if INEC itself does not take action directly, the ICPC and other bodies can actually engage these people, can actually charge these people to court. But we are talking about a federal government for which IP, ICPC, EFCC are all under the presidency. So I don't know how it will work for them to say, OK, they want to prosecute um, someone in the presidency for using federal money to bribe people for their votes. Now, uh, some other issues I want to raise in this vote buying uh, thing is that when they, they, they call on people to come to their centers like they did yesterday, what they do is that they use your voter card to register your name and your information and maybe give you 1,000, 2,000 naira. It's when you provide evidence that you voted, most likely by snapping your, um, your voter um, slip or something else, that's when you get the main bulk of the money. So it's very, it's a situation where you have to fully commit yourself before you get the benefits. So you can't just say, oh, you've collected this and you go away and you, you are compensated. Then secondly, I just wanted to suggest to my brother Jude that when you are collecting evidence to show, it's no longer that it's a rumor or anything, 
go to Edia Izeyamu's page on, on, on Twitter and you will see pictures she posted herself of where she's distributing these things to um, the women. So I just wanted to put that in. But there are laws on bribery. There are laws on voter buying, which aside from INEC, because a lot of times it seems INEC is very engaged with other things that they don't prosecute these cases. But we have ICPC and we have um, EFCC can even come in because this is federal money now. So, however, they are not very independent as most people will have you see. But in the future, one thing I know is that in the near or distant future, these people carrying out these acts will be called to book by next government or some other organization. Um, I'm going to quickly go to Obasomi Jude now. I, I want to, you know, quickly get your views. Um, both the APC and the PDP have uh, distanced themselves from allegations and these allegations of vote buy-in. Um, where else, you know, can we search for answers then? Okay, thank you. Uh, if they want to deny, it's not un unusual. And it is expected of them at this critical moment for everybody to try to play safe now. So uh, our own challenge has to do with the people. Because one, this, the politicians want to do everything humanly and otherwise possible for them to get their votes. They don't mind what it takes to get their votes from the people. But the people and the voters must understand this, that we have passed that level of vote buying. People should try as much as possible to resist selling their conscience or selling their PVC job because they want to get some gratification. As my colleague said, it's right too unfortunate now that the poverty rates in our country and in our state is so high that people are prepared to do anything for them to have some funds for them to survive. In part of, part of our, our sensitization work we had you know, before now, a family in Akoko Edo said, I, I don't mind, even if it is 500 Naira, I'm prepared to vote for the person. So you can see now that somebody is prepared to sell his vote, his, uh, his vote for 500 Naira, and the politicians are prepared to pay. You see, this brings up the question of a developmental gap in the system. The funds that would have been used to provide hospitals, to provide roads, to provide security are stopped somewhere and they allow the people to suffer. And when they suffer, at the point of election, they bring out these funds that were meant for roads and they start to distribute recklessly to the people. You see, that is the greatest challenge because one, if all of us have these basic amenities, you have the you have good roads, there's uh, uh, electricity, there's water, you can afford quality education for your kids. Nobody be interested in the three or five thousand naira or the wrapper that they receive. It's just because these things are not there. But I strongly believe that a man who is in the desert is unable to get water to drink for three, four, five years. We not say that because he or she is tasty and will say, I want to drink warm or hot, hot water. It is not possible at all. So if Edo people or Nigeria have that kind of mindset, why don't we exercise a little patience and ensure that we vote the right person and not just voting, we engage. Most of all these guys that are involved in selling of their votes or even buying, they're not even interested in engaging government. They just know that there's an annual ritual of four years. Every four years, you go to a particular polling unit or a location for you to go and you, you know, use right. your your voters card to vote thereafter you, you go much. back but if you have that kind of thinking that voting is a process good governance is a process in the sense that when i vote you into office i should be able to come and engage you but by the time you set they sell their votes there's no way it's not possible all for right them thank to you very much um, and that is the gap you're back to and that's uh, uh, back, I just want to wrap up with uh, Najib Bello. I want, I want to get your views on how the federal government should respond to these allegations um, uh, at a time like this. 
What would you expect the President Muhammadu Buhari to, and or the presidency to, um, how would you expect them to respond? Respond is if they are not responsible for this action. If um, maybe a group of people close to the government just set up this arrangement and use the name of the federal government and use the name of the president and the presidency to sponsor this program, then the president can come out and, you know, condemn it as he has done with many other things, but then take action to, to ensure that those who are responsible are punished. According to INEC's own uh, offenses rules, according to the Electoral Act of 2010, people that bribe or even receive bribe should get to pay a fine of 500,000 naira or spend 12 months in jail, or both punishments. So if the government is not partaking in this, if they are not uh, responsible for this, they can swing into action and ensure that those responsible are punished. But then, from everything that has uh, come up so far, we've seen, um, we've seen an advertorial where Buhari is there, um, Festus Keamo is there, you know, and the wife of the Edo State, uh, one of the contestants in Edo State, um, Idia Izeyamu, they are all there in the advertorial sponsoring this thing. So I don't see how else the presidency will respond if they are responsible. Obaso Bejud and uh, Najib Belo, thank you both for speaking with us. Thank you for having me.